first, it is election day here in the U.S. Voters have been streaming in and out of polling stations across the nation to cast their ballots for congressional leaders and various social measures. The elections being held in each U.S. state have national implications. Here's a breakdown of what may happen. There could be a power shift. President Barack Obama's party, the Democrats, may lose its majority in the Senate. Republicans could also pick up even more seats in the House of Representatives. Wall Street analysts say with Republicans in control on Capitol Hill, we could see friendlier policies for the energy, defense, and financial sectors. Now, as for the issues getting a lot of attention, marijuana tops the list. Three states, along with Washington, D.C., will decide if the drug should be legal for med medical or recreational use. Even with all that and more at stake, polls show only 40 percent of eligible voters will actually vote in these midterm elections. As Americans choose their representatives in the U.S. Congress, perhaps no race is more important than the one to represent Kentucky in the Senate. The top Republican, Mitch McConnell, is up for re-election. Democrats say he's made a name for himself as the chief obstructionist against the policies of U.S. President Barack Obama. CCTV's Jessica Stone joins us with more. Jess. And Elaine, Kentucky voters realize just how important this midterm election is to the future of American politics, because if Republicans pick up six additional seats in the U.S. Senate, giving them control, it would also make Mitch McConnell, if he wins his re-election bid here, the top Republican in the entire U.S. Congress. Of course, if he loses, it could be interpreted as an indictment of blaming him for Washington's gridlock. Driving through the Kentucky mountains, it doesn't take long for the music. I'm Allison Lundergan Grimes, and Kentucky can change Washington. To give way to political ads. Mitch McConnell is at the heart of everything that's wrong in Washington. In one of the most expensive political races in the United States. But Mitch McConnell has been the leader in fighting back for our coal families and our jobs. $78 million and counting, according to the Center for Responsive Politics. I think it's exciting. We're, we're making history right here, right now. This is a big race. I mean, I think a lot of every Kentucky citizen knows that. At a microbrewery called Country Boy in central Kentucky, some voters are ready for a change. Nick Edwards and his fellow college students weren't even born when Republican Senator Mitch McConnell took office in Washington, D.C. You can really look at what he's done for the state, and it kind of seems small compared to what could have been done. IT engineer Hark Pickett wants to see more legislation on tap moving through Congress. We're kind of at a gridlock or stalemate in Congress, and it would be nice to have that broken up. Will you react with me by standing up and fighting back? Allison Lundergan Grimes is the Democrat running against McConnell. On this day, she's in eastern Kentucky's coal country, reassuring coal miners she'll protect their jobs. In the past year, the coal industry has lost more than 15 percent of its jobs, almost all of them here. McConnell blames President Barack Obama's environmental regulations for the job losses and has tried to tie Grimes to that policy. She's tried to put distance between her views on coal and the president's. Veteran coal miners Bubby Bevins and Dusty Scott take us deep underground between shifts. It's the best grade of coal in, you know, in the state, really. Men like them can earn $60 an hour. But their mine has hit hard times. Bubby Bevins has had to lay off about 30 miners because customers can't meet environmental regulations if they buy the mine's high sulfur coal. Uh, one whole section, three shifts, we had to lay off. Will you be able to bring them back? Uh, we'll bring them back little by little. You had to lay off your son? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That was hard, I bet. Uh, well, we've been trying to get him back on, you know. By now, coal employs less than 1% of folks here in Kentucky, but the politics of coal still run very deep. As far as uh, the woman's concerned, she's anti-coal. She says she ain't, but, you know, what I've seen out of her, she is. Mrs. Not, Grimes? Yeah. And I don't think she can help the coal business none. But McConnell, I think, is about the only hope we got. But maybe you feel 
With coal taxes funding everyday services for Kentucky residents and even the roads they drive on, many votes in this consequential Senate race still revolve around Kentucky coal. And Elaine, the politics of coal in Kentucky are still pretty divisive. We talked to some voters who say it has an outsized or oversized influence over their politics, that they'd rather hear about other issues uh, in terms of who, uh, what people support in the election. We also talked to retired coal miners who genuinely believe who they send to Washington could dictate the future of coal in their state. And Jessica, across the 10 states or so that you're watching, what are the key issues candidates are running on? Well, we are just now beginning to get some exit polling data, which indicates that the economy is still the biggest issue. A majority of Americans telling uh, the pollsters that that is the singular biggest issues that brought them to the polls that they're voting on. Uh, things like immigration and foreign policy, uh, distant seconds and thirds. And on a more personal note, uh, we really did see throughout this cycle a lot of candidates uh, running on things like minimum wage. There will be referendum uh, votes throughout the country on raising the minimum wage in several states. We're also seeing candidates campaign on energy policy, not just coal, but the future of the oil and natural gas industry here. And we're waiting to see if there will be a real power shift here in the U.S. What would a Republican majority in the United States Senate mean to the U.S. economy? Well, there's not a clear vision from bankers and economists on that. It's really going to depend on the type of Republicans that come in. But there are two scenarios that they're, that they're discussing right now. One is that gridlock could actually increase because the strength of the opposition against the U.S. president would be stronger if there was a majority Republican uh, presence in the entire U.S. Congress. That could affect things like budgeting, the deficit, uh, the debt ceiling. We saw a narrow deal, of course, a few years back between Republicans and Democrats on that. Uh, and yet a budget deal in and of itself, as we saw during that period, uh, cost us military spending and also raised taxes. So in that way, that can also create uncertainty for businesses. Back to you. All right, Jessica Stone in Washington.